Well, how you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at Lisa Frankenstein. This was written by Diablo Cody, directed by Zelda Williams, and stars Catherine Newton and Cole Sprouse. This movie takes us back to ye olden days of 1989. Newton plays Lisa Swallows, an awkward teenage goth girl who doesn't talk much and likes to hang out in graveyards. She's a bit of a mess, but in her defense, her life has been a bit of a mess ever since her mother was killed by an axe murderer. Her father quickly remarried, and she gained a horrible stepmother and a not-so-horrible stepsister. Her life gets even stranger when one fateful night, a bolt of green lightning brings a young Victorian man back to life. Although his corpse is missing a few parts. Namely, an ear, a hand, and the part you're thinking of right now. She tries to help piece him back together, but it turns out killing people and stealing parts of their bodies tends not to go unnoticed. Who knew? So I have mixed feelings about this one. There was a lot of stuff I liked and a lot of stuff I didn't like so much. This is Zelda Williams' feature-length directorial debut, and overall I thought she did a pretty good job recreating the 1980s horror comedy vibe. Although while the comedy mostly works, the horror aspect probably could have been ramped up a bit, but they were up against a PG-13 rating. And I do not know if that was William's decision or the studio's, but amping the violence up to an R rating probably would have helped. Very good soundtrack, which includes a funny little musical number. And I did like how Lisa and the creature, as he is known throughout the movie, figured out how to reattach those body parts and bring them back to life. Zapping those dead body parts back to life requires electricity, and Lisa's stepsister Taffy just happens to have a faulty tanning bed that electrocutes anyone who lies in it. And I believe the brand name on that tanning bed was Kiss of Life or something like that. Very well done. There were a few clever references thrown around, including the title. Uh, some not-so-clever ones as well. It felt like a few of them were thrown in just for the sake of throwing them in. I thought the cast did an excellent job overall. Newton does a great job playing this shy, awkward girl who is understandably going through some shit. And after meeting the creature, she starts to become more and more goth, and I thought she played that transition pretty well. I liked Lisa Soberano as Taffy, who, unlike her mother, seems to be a genuinely kind person, albeit a bit airheaded. And she plays those airheaded moments well. She was very funny. There's an early scene where Lisa and Taffy are talking about some guy Lisa likes, and she says, he's not really into jock stuff, he's cerebral. And Taffy says, oh, he's in a wheelchair? Which is a great line, and her delivery was perfect. Cole Sprouse was in a very challenging position playing the creature, as for almost the entire movie, he is unable to speak. The most he can do is grunt. So all of his communication is grunts and body language and facial expressions, and he nails it. Unfortunately, the romance that develops between him and Lisa felt a little empty to me, but I think that's less to do with their chemistry and more to do with the script. Carlo Gugino plays the aforementioned Wicked stepmother, and she nails it, as she often does. She plays that role very well, but maybe a little too well in this case. This is one part of the story that kinda lost me. There's an early scene where Taffy mentions that Lisa's father and her mother met, fell in love, and got married within, like, six months after Lisa's mother was murdered. And the way she says it certainly makes you think that something shady was going on there. And it is never mentioned again. It really seemed to me that Lisa's mother's murder should have been a bigger part of the story than it was. And the fact that it wasn't, and they apparently legitimately did meet, fall in love, and get married in six months, has me asking, what the hell did he see in her? Like, she is horrible. And that kind of took me out of the movie, because I really do not get how this marriage happened in the first place. I mean, it's Carla Gugino, sure, she's gorgeous, but is she forget about your murdered wife and remarry within six months gorgeous? With all due respect to Ms. Gugino, I'm gonna say no. And without giving too much away, towards the end of the movie, Lisa starts to become a lot less sympathetic. And it gets especially weird where after Lisa and the creature do something incredibly fucked up, although, to be fair, just a little bit funny, she gives this heartfelt speech to her sister about how she's always been so kind to her and made her feel like part of the family. And considering what had just happened before, it kind of rang hollow. And I can't say I cared for how the movie ended. It felt like the movie wanted me to keep caring about Lisa, and at that point, no. 
Overall, I like the premise and the atmosphere, and it definitely had its moments, but I think the story needed another pass. It's a decent movie, but it has a few issues that keep it from being a really good movie. Because of that, I can't really recommend seeing it in theaters. I would say, wait for rental. And that's all I have to say about Lisa Frankenstein. Till next time, take care.